Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer, and I want to demonstrate some basic adjustments in Lightroom. And so these photographs are actually rejects from a uh, shoot of a barbecue and a homecoming event, but uh, I thought that they would suffice to show some basic concepts here. So I'm going to go into the develop module, and you can see this has nothing's been done to it yet. And it's underexposed. Uh, this uh, not enough light was let into the camera. So the first thing you want to do is adjust the exposure. And generally, when you're adjusting an image, that's where you want to start. And I us usually do this visually, and I look for skin tones in a in a picture of people. And uh, I go, I make the adjustment until the skin tones look good. And having done that, now it looks to me like the the white on the aprons might be a little bit intense. So I'm going to back down on the highlights slider. A little bit just to bring back a little bit of detail in the apron and that's all I'm going to do on that one that's really all it needs uh, I could think about cropping it but um, um, it's already I'm losing her feet down here and um, and this is gay off the close up here I could crop the sides off a little bit but um, I kind of like having a little bit of space on the sides and seeing the smoke etc so going to this one and this is a, a common situation where uh, and where there are several of these in here uh, where they're in shade and there's a bright light outside of there. So the light meter exposed for the average situation and so they end up being a little bit dark. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with exposure and adjust till the skin tones look pretty good. And then I'm going to pull back the highlights to get the background looking good. And that combination usually works quite well. And uh, taking a look at the histogram up here, it uh, is showing a pretty good spectrum all the way from light to dark. Uh, this um, on the white side on the right, it's coming pretty much to the edge, and the black is coming very near it. I'm going to push the blacks down a little bit, darken that just a little bit, turn on the clipping indicators on here uh, just by clicking those two little buttons. And now if I push the blacks down far enough, you'll start to see this is indicating that these are clipping, meaning that they are losing detail in that area. So I'll come back up on the black until I don't have that anymore. And they're just right on the edge of that. That gives me a nice, a nice deep black without, without distorting, without, you know, without losing in information. And that's about it on that one. Might look at possibly increasing the contrast a little bit. Notice that that's darkening the skin tones a little bit, but it's um, making it a little bit richer, which I kind of like. So I think I'll just leave it like that. And let's go on to the next one. And this one actually is out of focus, so so we're just going to skip it because it's not really usable at all. And um, so we can take a look at the settings here. There's an ISO 100 and 35 millimeter f5.6, and it was at a 125th of a second. So that's a fast enough shutter speed that um, it shouldn't have been an issue of camera motion. So I suspect the issue is that it simply was focused closer. It looks like this is maybe sharp down here. So it was focusing closer. Uh, I might have moved after I um, pressed the button, the shutter button halfway down. I usually press it halfway to get um, the exposure lock. So I may have moved back a little bit after doing that. But anyway, it's uh, not a good shot. So on this one, I'd probably want to crop this in a little bit. I uh, don't know whether I want to leave the truck in or out. I kind of I kind of like the truck, but I think I'm going to crop some off the left side. And I want to undo the uh, make sure this is not locked so that I um, don't am not constrained by the proportions there. And I'm going to just crop in here and leave the truck and leave them like that. I think that's kind of nice. And maybe brighten it up just a little bit just a touch and I don't think it needs anything else but we move on to the next one and on this one I think I'm going to crop in on this one and this time I'm going to maintain the proportion so I'm going to lock that and when I bring this in it'll it'll come in on both sides and move it in about like that and I want to see what happens if I make this pole be straight up and down? And so there's this really handy little angle uh, thing like a carpenter's um, level. I click on that and then just drag down here 
and make that straight, it will make that automatically be vertical. But I don't think I like that, so I'm going to reset that and come back in here and leave the that angle thing is especially good if you have a horizon in your photograph. You can very quickly make that horizon level. In this case, we're going to leave that like that and maybe deepen the blacks just a little bit. Not quite so eclipse. And, and that looks good. Here's another one that uh, was a problem of uh, there in shadow. And we have a nice bright sky, and so the light meter saw all that light coming from the sky and averaged out between the two, and so um, they ended up being underexposed. So let's brighten them up quite a bit and pull the highlights way down. And let's just, we're going to do a more advanced adjustment on this one. We're going to use the adjustment brush. And with the adjustment brush, I can press the O key, uh, which will allow me to see what I'm painting. And I'm just going to paint this area here and use a bracket key to increase the size of the brush. And I just want to paint in the sky. And uh, let's see, I think I'm going to use the I'm going to use the auto mask. And what that'll do is make it so it doesn't go into these other areas. It'll stay in the general color that I'm, that the majority of it is on. And let me make the brush a little smaller. And I come in here. And now I'm going to turn the auto mask back off so that I can get. More of this. And um, I'm probably going to just ignore the fact that this guy is going through her hat there. So now I'm going to uh, hit the O key again to turn off that visual reference. And now I'm just going to darken the exposure here a little bit. And I'm actually going to add a little color to it. So I'm going to click on this color here and make it a little bit blue. Kind of like that. Just a subtle bit of color in there. And let's see what happens if I darken it even more. No, I don't like it too dark. So I think right about like that. And click OK on that. Now if I want to go back and edit that uh, adjustment sometime later, if I click on the adjustment brush, this little dot shows up. If I want to do a different adjustment, then I can, for example, let's say I want to do an adjustment on their faces. I uh, can turn the O on again and just paint in there and there. O off again. And let's brighten that up a little bit and increase the contrast a little bit. And it's looking a little bit orange, so let's uh, adjust the white balance just a tiny bit toward blue. And that looks good. So now if I go into the adjustment brush here, you see these two dots. If I want to edit that one, I can click on it. And now I can I'm on that particular adjustment. Or I can click on this one and I can edit that one. In this case I want to just say I don't want to do anything else. And that's looking pretty good now. All right, moving on to this one. This one, I think I would just want to crop some off the side. And uh, this one does look like it's a little bit crooked. So I'm going to use that. Um, actually, I'm going to do it manually. Just adjust this just kind of like that. And maybe bring this side in. Uh, I don't want to have the proportions locked. Just bring this in some. Just, just missing that truck there. And I kind of like them walking off toward the left side of the image and having this crowd of people over here. Um, let's just see what it looks like if I cut out some of those people there. No, I kind of like having them over there. So, like that. 
and I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit and see what happens if I bring down that. No, don't want to be like that. And um, you can see we've got a little bit of clipping going on here in the in that spot, but there's so little of it that it probably is not going to matter. But if I wanted to be careful about that, I can bring my highlights back down to make it even less. And I think I want a little bit more contrast on this. You notice that these are small adjustments I'm making. Okay, so I grabbed the wrong slider a moment ago. I moved the contrast instead of the highlights. So now I've got that where I want. I've got no clipping going on there. And uh, I've got a little extra contrast. And um, I might actually want to increase the vibrance a little bit. The difference between vibrance and saturation is that they both increase the, the will adjust the saturation, but vibrance will adjust the less saturated areas more than the more saturated areas. Whereas saturation will adjust everything equally. So that's about as much as I want to add of that. You want to be very careful that you don't uh, make unrealistic looking colors. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of clarity. Clarity gives a sort of hardens the the detail in um, you know differentiated areas like in, in the the skin tones. And with a portrait, you definitely want to be careful not to do too much because I'm going to show you what it looks like if we do a lot of clarity. It gets um, it gets kind of harsh, especially the skin tones start to look really harsh. So in a portrait, I uh, will almost never go above ten. And seven is a is a more typical number, uh, just to give it a little bit of sharpness without uh, making it rough looking. All right, and the last one we've got here, I'm going to lighten this up and use my usual process here. Bring that down just a little bit, uh, maybe maybe not really base, but not at all, and then a little bit of clarity. And maybe drop the blacks down just a bit. Let's see what happens. We okay, we get clipping there. So bring it back up until there's no clipping, just the edge of clipping right now. You can see just a tiny bit in here, and that looks pretty good. So the ma majority of adjustments I made here were with exposure and highlights and blacks, and uh, a little bit of other things along the way. So we can see. Um, the before after view of that one. See, I've lightened it up a bit and just uh, made it have a little bit, a little bit more, a little more pop. And here, unfortunately, the before after view does not show uh, the before before cropping. But uh, you can see here that it's just got a little bit, a little bit more sense of a little more contrast, really. And here, got a big difference. And this one, um, not a whole lot. Uh, most, most, of the, most of what I did on that was cropping. And this one, it's a little brighter. This one, we didn't do anything to it. And here, again, a little brighter to um, bring out the foreground there. I could probably stand to darken this area a little bit more. So another more advanced tool here that uh, is not part of the basic set, but when you move on further in the develop module, you get into the HSL um, controls here, and I can adjust individual colors. So I can come into the luminance and drop the yellows, maybe, right here. Bring that down a little bit. And notice when I'm doing that, it's increasing the saturation, and I want to deal with that. So I come back in here and I'm going to reduce the saturation of those yellows so that I don't get that artificial look. So that's better. So now I've, I've, I've come close to matching the tone in the original for the background, but uh, I have uh, significantly lightened them up. And so this area back here still looks better in the uh, in the before, but uh, but they look a whole lot better in the after. So if I wanted to work on that area, I'd probably use the adjustment brush to darken that area back there. And finally, this one, mostly we just lightened it up and made sure we didn't lose texture in the whites. 
All right, there you go. Hope that was useful to you.